Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Twist Gaming. We are here live at Gen Con 2018 in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I am starting off this morning of our day-long live Gen Con coverage on a really high note. Look at really high note. Really high. Really high note. I'm here. <laughs> I am here with <laughs> David from Junk Spirit Games, and David is here to show us um, the... I, I, I don't want to say most recent release. Yeah. Uh, maybe the most recent Kickstarter. Yeah. As well as what you guys have coming up. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So this this current uh, item that we're showing off, right? We're uh, for sale first time at Gen Con. Mm -hmm. um, is Tyler Sigmund's Crows, our, our third game in our in our lineup of games, and um, we essentially had this game uh, showed to us by Tyler um, uh, about uh, about seven or eight months ago. I mean, seven or eight months before the Kickstarter, I should say. And then, of course, we got to work. Um, initially, Crows was a game. Crows was a game that was made about eight years ago by um, something Valley Games. I forget the name exactly. Um, they are no longer a thing. And so he was uh, side lamenting, very lightly lamenting, that he didn't uh, he didn't have the game in print anymore, and he wanted it because he loves. He's a big Crow nerd. Um, okay. I'm not getting in trouble for that one. If Tyler sees it, <laughs> he, he knows he's a Crow nerd. So he uh, he was really uh, unhappy about you know not it being you know it not being in a circulation exactly. out there. Exactly. And just you really proud of his work totally totally and so um the graphic design was terrible on it too and so i was i you know i said hey get this to our team and we'll we'll make this better we'll add some little gameplay elements even eight years ago we'll right? make we'll make this the game that you wanted to see yeah, out there. yeah exactly i mean even eight years ago games from eight years ago seem like ancient relics right and so because so much has changed so quickly in the gaming industry right right and the 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 components that you can get your hands on the type of mechanics you can see so i i said to him i want to modernize the title and he looked at me like side eye like what do you mean modernize you know it's been it's only been eight years and uh it need, it did it needs a little you know it's like needs a little extra little boost into the modern gaming era right okay so yeah and so that's what we did we brought some extra things and most of that um the the small elements that i changed to make the game slightly better um were very strategic you know they, they add more strategy to the game. Okay. You know? So um, previously, for example, the game, you would have one tile. You would draw a tile and place a tile like you would in Carcassonne. Okay. So we very simply changed it so that you have two tiles in your hand. Okay. And then at your turn, you decide on one of the two and you put that into play and then you draw another tile. So, what, you know, there, it reduces AP a little bit, right? It reduces the time of the game a little bit. Okay. Uh, because you're looking and you're like, okay, this is what I'm likely to do depending on what you know previous players do. And then you could, again, again you can change what you're going to do based on the two that you have. Now, we were fortunate enough to spotlight this game when it was live on uh, Kickstarter. Yes, yeah. yes, and the guys got to play it, but yes. I didn't get the opportunity uh, yes. to play it. So talk to me about what Tyler Sigmund's Crows is. Yeah. Give, me, give me your elevator pitch. Yeah, my David. elevator pitch for it is it's, it's, a, it's a tile placement game in the same vein of games like Carcassonne where the map is built uh, uniquely every time. Okay. Um, and then in the game, you play a hermit wizard that is trying to get the crows. Uh, the crows here in this, in this land actually generate mana in this once-in-a-lifetime event they get the crows to show up to their to their space and then you score off those crows so you continually okay. score every turn and then at the end of the game obviously the person with the highest score wins now the game is absolutely gorgeous oh, yeah. i love I, I mean you've got the black red and you know gray yep. black white and red kind of color scheme yep. to it um let me see let's let's take a closer look at some of your wizard cards because i oh I yeah want to bring that up yep Yes, and this is Justin Hillgrove's art. Um, Justin's been uh, professionally doing art for about 11 years, and um, we always kind of figure out a way that we can just kind of kick up the art in our games and feature his work. Um, he's got a very large following, and so it would be silly for us to not kind of tap into that as we continue to make games with him. And um, yeah, and those are all double-sided, by the way. Oh, are they? Yeah, they have a male-female side, depending on uh, who you want to play. And there's, there's Burl, that's my favorite character. You can see through his eyes because of the green screen. That's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, but um, as you can cool. tell, Justin's very talented. Yeah. He um, he, very, you know, he's kind of known as being a very whimsical artist, and so being able to feature his art in in our games has has been a big a big boon for us. It's been awesome. That's absolutely fantastic. Very pretty. Yeah, and in the game, those don't really serve any function other than to essentially you know tie you into the theme a little bit, and then also you can you know they have a little punch of color. So if you're if you're in this case, you'd be the purple player. Um, when you put your uh, Mana totem out. No one has to say, "Wait, who's purple?" They can just look around because there's a lot of deception. Like when you start to strategize in the game, you don't want to show what you're likely to do in that turn. Right. So it's important that you just kind of glance around the table and then, you know, sit there and hope that no one notices what you're about to do, which is about what two thirds of the games out there. You know, so so that's definitely part of the game. And so having those uh, character um, 
uh, cards in front of you helps you do that. Okay, so you've got the crows on the table here. Yeah. I've got some sort of uh, obelisks. Yes. What am I? What am I doing as a wizard? What am I doing on my turn? Yeah. So what you're looking at here is basically the basic setup. I just kind of threw that together. Yep. You create this grid, um, and then you can build into that. So if you and I both had two tiles, yeah. and um, let's say that I go first, and I'm, we'll throw some cards out real quick. Sure. So you're playing purple, and I'm playing yellow. Okay. And um, and so what you would do is, um, it, it, the game in the beginning kind of is a little bit of a build up and obviously as the game builds up then you um, you know you have this kind of sc scrolling map that goes out but early on you're just trying to get some punches of points really quick and all the different tiles they have different abilities on them so, uh, the ones that I have crows on already those you, as you put them into play the crows come and you put them on the tile okay. so I actually have one car one in my hand that if I put this into play I'll put a um, a crow on it so um, I won't get into the specifics of the other special tiles but um, you very simply in this game, you pick one of your two tiles that you have in your hand, mm -hmm. and you put it into play. Then you immediately draw another tile, and then you put your mana totem somewhere on the board. Anywhere? Anywhere on the board. That, well, it has to be an empty square. Okay. So I couldn't put it on one of the squares with um, crows. The, the crows on it. And if you had already played early in the round, then I couldn't play on yours. Okay. So, um, so in this case... Um, this is an amazing play for me. Just, uh, just randomly showed up like that. Um, <laughs> you know that works. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but because what's going to end up happening is at the end of this round, and okay. after you then play as well, yeah. um, you, you'll play your tile. You'll put your guy down uh, somewhere else, and then all the um, uh, all the crows will then flock to the nearest orthog orthogonal. Um, player okay. so in this case obviously I'm one square away yeah and all these guys would come to me and I would get a bajillion points right so um so you would be in a spot where on your turn you probably want to play somewhere here or here to try to like steal from steal me them, right, right, right right exactly so you, you can't like, play on a spot with crows though right right all right so then I would put something and I just I want to show off this particular oh, tile yes, absolutely. because as we're learning about how to play yep. look at that spot UV on the tile it's just it just adds that little bit of yeah. something to the game. Yeah, totally. We we you can thank the backers for that one. We had a long term stretch goal on that one, and we wanted to um, kind of punch in that some of the tiles are very special. And this is actually the Gem Cave tile, and um, and so in this case, uh, put your guy in there, probably. Yep. There so you in go. this case, the Gem Cave the Gem Cave tile will actually break ties. Now, if this wasn't a Gem Cave tile, and I did, and I was, you can see I'm standing on one. Yeah. And and we were, we're tied right now, and so these guys are kind of split. Right. Right. If um, if I if you didn't have that and I did or vice versa or whatever, mm -hmm. it would go to the player with the gem cave tiles and it would uh, completely you would break ties completely. So the gem cave tile is very powerful in that way. So the fact that you play both obviously those would cancel out. And in this case, when the flocking stage comes around, you would get one of these. I'd get one of these. You would get one of these, and I would get one of these. This this last one's confused. You can't be split, so he just stays put. And then the rest of them would all flock in like this, right? These guys wouldn't move at all, obviously, because we're not even lined nothing up with them. Nothing in there. Yeah, and then there's nothing in there either, right? So then um, then we would score. Very simply, it uh, looks like you've got four points. I've got six points. Oh, there you go. We're what are you talking around. about? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I was looking over there. So I got yeah. six points, and yeah. you got four points. Oh, I see how it is. Yeah. So then, um, <laughs> you're doing the interview. You can't, like, you can't, don't mess with the interview. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, and you are correct. So... <laughs> So, um, in this case, actually, um, the rule for it, too, is if you have six or more crows in the same spot, then you create a murder. And you take your, um, you score your points, obviously. And we would get the, uh, you know, uh, the tokens Look, Dave, for that. before you go and create yeah. this murder, yeah. I just need yeah. to let you know this is live on camera. <laughs> you will not get away with this, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, absolutely. Um, so, uh, so it creates a murder of crows, and then you pick up all the crows that are on the tile. Okay. Uh, two of them go away as a mated pair back to the box. You put the mana corruption tile on on there. Basically, that that kind of simulates that you've you've corrupted that area. Look at. And it's got a little spot UV on it as well. Yeah. And look at the deep like. Yeah. Justin threw most of these tiles together in about two and a half to three weeks. I don't want to give away a secret. He's I, amazing. That's fantastic. And he, yeah, his, his detail is unbelievable. And then when you end up, uh, you choose one of the adjacent tiles next to it, and then you kind of go around in a spiraling pattern. Obviously, you would skip this empty space, mm -hmm. and again, you would skip the empty spaces. And then that would be the end of that turn. And then essentially, um, you would become the, the first player next turn, because I was first player last turn, and you just would go around the table in that way. I love that you're, the tokens, as I'm going through here, are not... I was kind of expecting the crow meeples to be all the same. Oh, like, right. And, and I could totally understand. I would be, I was okay with that. Yep, yep. And then as I'm looking at you place the crows, yep. I'm realizing that they're all, that you've got, well, you have three. Do you have more than right that? There. He's Look like at looking that. backwards, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we put them together, you know, as 
uh, when Justin was doing the art for everything, I said to him, you know, we definitely need some crows, and I want one like where he's like looking backwards, I want one where he's kind, and one where he's like landing. And then he drew yeah. the fourth one as well, and so we just kind of snuck him in. It was a perfect way to do it. The original game had two different poses, and we just thought it would be awesome to have. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I thought it would be awesome to have like a variety. So the game comes with 36 crows, and um, you can kind of get this like kind of chaotic feel as the game continues on, which is kind of crows just kind of you know flocking all over the place in there. So yeah, that's kind of one of the fun things that we were able to do for the for the upgrade of this game, right? It really shows like the small the small elements like that really show that you've put a lot of attention to detail in the game. Yeah, that's kind of our company's like thing, right? Uh, Justin, um, for our previous game. He he created a full uh, coloring book with lore in it for our uh, Bite of the Queen game. And it was like a Tuesday. And he said, he called me on the phone. And he said, hey, I'm thinking about this idea. And then on Thursday, I came into a studio and he said, oh, so I already ordered 2,000 of those. Oh, my God. And I was like, I was like, dude, like you didn't, you you didn't just... let me proofread the text or anything. And then you go through it and there was no proofreading needed. There was, there's no mistakes in there. So okay. his he's got a very acute sense of detail. I've been gaming since I'm 10 years old. So I know what. You know, I know what I would want in a right. good game, you know? And so we just make sure that everything is, is really good. I mean, we did small little moves. Like, these are resin. The the, the manatomes are resin, while these are wood. And the resin ones, they, they stay put. When they were wood, they didn't, they didn't, they fell. You know, they wouldn't stay up. So, yeah, oh, so we yeah, changed them to that. resin, right? And if people aren't going to notice these things. They're just going to believe, you know, they're going to get their package together and go, wow, this is a really high-quality game. But as you said, we do have a really weird, kind of very acute sense of detail, for no, sure. Th that's really cool. And um, so I'm... I am, what, an arm's length away from sure. the obelisks yeah. right now, and I didn't realize that they were resin oh, sure. until I went to go pick them up. Right. And the reason I point that out is because, you know, some, you've got a consistency in the look of yeah. your materials yep. across the gameplay. And in a game where you have this kind of black, white, and red color scheme, sure. you're kind of looking for that consistent that consistency across all of the components. Right, right. That's in fact, cool. we even did the thing too where like the outside of the box only has black, white, and red on it, right? And right. we even, our logo is normally green. So we, we actually just white it, you know, we just put white on there so that we don't have any weird colors just, you know, on the cover it's just straight black, white, and red, right? That's fantastic. Yeah. And I want to talk to you about, uh, we were talking a little bit beforehand mm -hmm. uh, with the attention to detail and kind of putting out the right kind of game. And you had mentioned with the original release of this game that it didn't play exactly the same oh, yeah. as what you've done now to this game yeah, yeah. and I, and I kind of really just want to focus on that contrast between what might already be out there for the original right. eight-year-old crows yep. and the junk spirit games Version. Tyler Sigmund's crows yeah no absolutely yeah one of the things that we, was very funny was when I was talking to Tyler about it and he showed me the game initially and then I was you know I I asked him you know if we can remake it he in that process when he was kind of giving me the files over he said oh by the way um, the game didn't get this one rule right which removed some of the strategy of the game so we, we obviously put that right into the game added some very small um, tweaks here and there we added a couple new tiles we added um, there's spells in the game as well so we added that as well um, and we changed some of those up to make them more strategic more powerful more swingy right so the game can get really crazy um, and so it just adds more to the element uh, of you know I mean, the elements of strategy of the game and so we just kind of wanted to kick that up and we're seeing that we have a lot of people that you know that have been gaming for forever. They have an original copy of Crows. They come to our booth and they're like, "Oh, I, I think I have this game, but this like looks looks really nice." And then they play it and they say, "Oh, this is different. It's different. I can feel it." You know. And so yeah, it's 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 really good. It's good to see that that that's a possibility for us, right? You know that 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 there's games out there. I mean, even restoration games with you know all their announcements recently and everything. But I mean, you know, everybody loves you know going back and playing Fireball Island or yes. potentially being able to play Dark Tower. So so bringing back games, um, even obscure games like Crows, you know, bringing them back is it's a lot of fun and it was a good project for us for sure. Fantastic. Uh, so the game is 10 and up. Mm -hmm. Who is the gamer that's going to love this game? Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, I used to own a game store, and that's the way I would always approach everything. People would pull a game off the shelf and be like, is this good? And I was like, I'm not going to tell you if it's good. Let me find out who you are first. So right? that I can match you yeah, up, and what are you going to exactly, enjoy? Exactly. Uh, this is definitely the kind of game, if you're the type of player that enjoys uh, high replayability, right, mm -hmm. and, um, and like a... That weird feeling that you get where you're holding on to your your items and you're you're hoping that your your opponents don't notice what's about to happen. You're about to pounce. Oh boy, I'm getting a phone call right now, <laughs> guys. I'm really important and stuff, and that's what you need to know about live TV. Um, I bet you ten bucks. That's my wife. Oh, it was. <laughs> <gasps> hey, babe. <laughs> Love you, honey. 
<laughs> okay, so um, so if you're the kind of player that, that holds on to your um, you know your secret. Um, objectives I would say you know there's no secret objective in this game but you know when you, you have your, your goals that you're about to the strategy you're exactly you're, 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 you're thinking like your three turns ahead and when you start to think three turns ahead and then it, it either unfolds or someone counters you and then you gotta you know change it quickly to still uh, recover that's the kind of player that's gonna enjoy this game very, very cool. I'm really excited. Now, uh, Crows was kickstarted earlier this year, yep. and you are just now getting your deliveries out to your domestic backers. Yeah. Uh, some of the international backers will be getting it soon. Yep. Shipping internationally, obviously, oh, takes longer right. than, than domestic. Yep. Uh, but Crows is not the only game that you have on deck. Yes. Yeah. So we, um, we actually are just showing off at Gen Con here. This is the first time we've actually had it in hand. These are actually, this is actually just a mock-up of our, of our current game, of the current one we're showing off. This mm -hmm. is Battle of the Bards. And we're showing it off uh, during Gen Con. It's a dice rolling uh, game with very light deck building aspects to it, mm -hmm. where you are controlling a bard troop, trying to win the audiences over. Um, in the same world that we created for uh, Bard of the Queen, the Tessendor, very family-friendly uh, fantasy world. And now, I have to ask, uh, because I noticed it, yeah. Um, the the badger. Yes. Oh yeah, the badger pin. Is this well? I did. Oh, I, I did see. see that. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. Are, are we? Are we, is is this the same? Are it we? Is. We actually call them the bludgers. Oh yeah. Sorry, I put them in the wrong spot. There you That's go. Fine. Yeah. And so we call them the bludgers. Uh, they're called the Batari as well. Um, we we have. Remember, I told you about that that coloring book we have. Yeah. So with, if the, you, with your if you lore. Grab that, yeah, with all the lore in it, it's it's an awesome book, and it kind of tells you all about all the things that are in there. And we're obviously world building inside the Tessner universe. Uh, the badgers are very interesting in that we put these things together. We put all these different animals together and just kind of create this world where these animals walk around. Um, and the backers and our customers and the comments on Facebook and Twitter, people are in love with the Badger characters. So we wanted to make sure that we brought, um, so this girl here, uh, that's the Badger, she's our Badger bassist with a double bass. And uh, we, love, we love kind of making her our kind of iconic character for this game. Speaking of iconic character yep. and the point that you brought up just a second ago yeah. before I diverted you, sure. you've got your Gen Con pin. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so our Gen Con pin. Um, we made sure to get a lot of these going because people, um, we kind of knew that the Gen Con pin and trading thing would be a big deal. Yeah, I've, got, yeah. I've got $2. When we go to Disneyland, it's all you do, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, um, so, yeah, the people that are really interested in that kind of thing um, and, and love, uh, you know, just kind of running around, finding really cool pins and, and finding games that they're interested in and, and, you know, and be able to show all that off to other people off of their lapel or, you know, wherever um, they want to put their pins. I thought it was a great thing to participate in, so we did that as well. Yeah. I thought that that was super great. Yeah. So we were we just we She's immediately so thought like, oh, we're gonna do this and it's gonna be fun, and they turned out amazing. I congratulated the person that um you know that made them when he came by the booth, and I I, I poured lots of love his way because I was like, oh man, you did it, you did it. You know, like the first year, you just it's it's great to see high quality work, right? Right. And you got to appreciate it. So Battle of the Bards, we are dice rolling. There's a little bit of deck building. Yep. Uh, tell me what we're doing. So so in the so in the game, um, what you end up what you do is you'll you'll have a hand of bards and you will pick three of them. And you put them on stage, and when they when they go on stage, uh, you will get dice for each one, and then you roll all the dice in your dice pool, including dice from your previous turns. Okay. And then uh, you use the dice uh, numbers. There's they're just standard pip dice. There's not they're not uh, custom dice. Okay. And you use the numbers uh, of the dice to uh, activate the abilities of the bards you have on stage, and then you create performances that please audiences, and then you <laughs> capture the audiences to um, to score points. Fantastic. You can also hire uh, advanced bards, and then those bards go into your deck. This is the light deck building aspect. And then as you continue to go through your deck, you're, um, you'll get a little bit wilder and wilder as the game goes on. So is this going to be kickstarted as well? Oh, yes. Obviously, uh, everybody in the world is broke as joke. So uh, there's no way that you can get anybody <laughs> to just like, oh, yeah, unless you're like, you know, one of the big boys. So um, even the big boys are in the Kickstarter. So yep. of course it will be yep. on Kickstarter. Uh, yeah, we'll be probably doing it around uh, December, January area. So then... We'll maybe expect to see Battle of the Bards on Spotlight Show. Oh yes, of <laughs> course, of course. I know it worked out really well for us last time. It was fun to uh, right. to see the guys interact with our prototype for crows. And obviously, this is in our prototype phase for this, and we're showing it off here at Gen Con. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't imagine that uh, that I mean I would imagine how do you put that? <laughs> I, I don't want to double negative myself. I would imagine that you will find it on your stream later. Yes. Awesome, fantastic. So Battle of the Bards is going to be coming up on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Tyler Sigmund's crows is shipping to backers right now yep. uh where can i find crows after 
Uh, if I didn't, if I didn't yeah. get the opportunity yeah, to yeah. kickstart it, where am I going to find crews? Yeah, so it's going to be going to game stores in the next month. Your local game store should have it. We're trying to make really good connections with retailers, and I really hope that all the retailers do carry it. Fantastic. And yeah. being a game pre uh, prior game store owner exactly. yourself, yep. yep, I'm sure that you're a big proponent of the friendly local game store. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We actually have some weird plans for Battle of the Bard. So if you're a retailer out there, really watch what Junk Spirits Games is about to do. I've been asking retailers um, at Gen Con, and I've got some weird plans, which I won't implement now it's a very long story but um, I'm trying to I'm trying to make it so that retailers don't get bit by Kickstarter as much as they claim to be being bit by and I you know I didn't have a game store during Kickstarter so I, I I don't I can't speak to that but I'm trying to make it happen for but everybody. it's something that you're you're cognizant of yes and, and I, I'm aware of I'm aware of how personal. difficult it is to be a retailer 100 percent very very yeah. cool well, David, thank you so much for coming on yeah. stream. Uh, where can my audience find you? Oh, very simply, just today? junkspiritgames.com. Obviously, you'll find uh, Junk Spirit Games on Twitter and Instagram as well. Awesome. David, thank you so yep. much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Bye, guys.